Last year's Redmi Note 5 Pro or the Redmi Note 5 AI was a good value for money smartphone and honestly I did recommend it to a lot of people. And this time around we have a successor to it, the Redmi Note 6 Pro. So is this device any better or is it similar to its predecessor or can it be compared to its predecessor? We are going to find that out in this review. But before we start, do hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so that you get notified each time our video goes live. Alright, let's start with the optical side of things. The phone comprises of a dual camera setup at the back and at the front as well. The camera duo at the back comprises of a 12 plus 5 megapixel sensors and the hardware setup is similar to that of the Note 5 AI. And even though the hardware setup is similar, I found improvements on the Note 6 Pro. The images captured from the Note 6 Pro just looks vibrant and colors seem to pop out quite a bit. A professional photographer could find them slightly oversaturated though. However, for me, it looks way better than the undersaturated images from the Note 5 AI. Just look at these images, you can see that the Note 6 Pro outperforms the Note 5 AI quite easily. Adding to it, details are well preserved and color accuracy is slightly better on the Note 6 Pro. I did not notice any sort of focusing issues either. The HDR mode does a respectable job and does not overprocess, though it pulls out some details in the shadows, keeping the overall sharpness of the images intact. The phone also has an AI mode which detects the object in focus and apparently processes it to make it look better, but I did not notice any significant differences, so there's that. And when it comes to low light images, they tend to lose some details. There's noise in it and grains are also quite noticeable all over. However, compared to that of the Note 5 AI, I'd say it does a better job. Now talking about the portrait images, the edge detection capabilities have considerably improved from the Note 5 AI. And this time, the amount of blur on the background looks more natural. So I was satisfied with the portrait images captured from this device. But as expected in this price range, portraits in artificial lights and low lights is just above average. Now moving on to the selfies, Xiaomi has packed two cameras at the front this time. The 20 megapixel primary sensor does most of the job here and the 2 megapixel camera is just there for depth sensing. So with both the cameras in action, you can capture portrait selfies that look remarkable with proper edge detection and right amount of blur intensity. Just look at these selfies, aren't they amazing? Normal selfies also look good in a similar fashion, so I have nothing to complain here too. However, the phone can only record 1080p videos and 30fps at maximum, but even at FHD Plus resolution only, the Note 6 Pro does a respectable job. Colors look true to life, focusing is great, and videos contain decent amount of details. And the good thing here is the presence of EIS that does a great job on suppressing the shakes and vibration on videos. On the display front, Xiaomi stretched the screen from 6 inch on the Note 5 AI to 6.26 inch on the Note 6 Pro without increasing the size of the phone. But to increase the screen to body ratio, Xiaomi this time has implemented a notch on the top. Speaking of which, it really looks ugly and is annoying at the same time. Xiaomi could have implemented a V-style notch like that on the Oppo F9 but that's not the case here. And if you hate the notch on this device like I do, you can also hide it with a black bar on the top. But since the display here is an IPS LCD panel and not an AMOLED panel, hiding the notch is not going to save you any battery. Now coming back to the quality of the IPS panel, the Full HD display looks really sharp. And the color accuracy is decent enough considering the price. But it looks a bit too warm for my liking. Not trying to be fussy here or anything but you will have to live with that. In terms of brightness, the screen has a maximum brightness of 480 nits, which is slightly lower than the 530 nits on the Redmi Note 5 AI. Nonetheless, the screen is legible even outdoors, which is a good part. I didn't face any issues even while viewing contents even in broad daylight. And I am happy to see an ambient light sensor and we all know why. The Xiaomi Redmi Note 6 Pro also has an LED notification light and just like its predecessor, it can only glow in white color. Like seriously, am I getting a Facebook notification or a missed call notification? How do I even know that? And the LED notification light is very dim, so is it very useful? I don't know, you guys tell me. On the design side, you won't see anything new and innovative here. For me, all the Xiaomi phones look similar, but Xiaomi implemented the same old-school design with metallic body caped with a plastic material on the top and at the bottom. 
but this time even the frame is plastic which may invite reliability issues over time. And for a similar price, you're getting a very elegant design on the Huawei Y9 2019, so Xiaomi really needs to buckle up and give its users something more interesting. Nonetheless, the device looks sturdy and feels decently premium while holding it, at least for what it's worth. So no complaints here. Now let's talk about the performance on the Redmi Note 6 Pro. The Redmi Note 6 Pro is a direct successor to the Redmi Note 5 AI and yet there is barely any difference in the performance front. I mean not even a little bit. Come on Xiaomi. Just like its predecessor, the Note 6 Pro comes with Snapdragon 636 chipset packing 4GB of RAM and 64GB of onboard storage on its sleeve. And as you would expect, there is hardly any difference while running apps or games or even while multitasking. And I'm not saying that the Snapdragon 636 is a bad chipset by any means, but with a successor, we expect upgrades. For a similar price, we get better performing phones from Asus, Honor and Realme. So Xiaomi is not really the king of performance as it used to be. Nonetheless, like I said it before, the Snapdragon 636 is a decent chipset and performs accordingly. It handles most of the day-to-day -day tasks without a fuss. I played Asphalt 9 and also ran PUBG in medium settings and while doing so, I did not notice any major lags and stutters. But occasionally, you will notice a slight drop in frame rates. On the software side, the phone comes with Android Audio 8.1 with MIUI 9.5 out of the box. But shortly after I got the handset for review, I got the MIUI 10.0.5 update and the new UI is much more polished. However, ads appear here and there in the UI which has made my user experience very bitter. I turned off every setting related to ads on the UI but still the same old story. Xiaomi, we get that your phones are affordable, but we also like a clean user experience. Please don't take it away from our users. Also, there are tons of bloatware which I found useless. And the sad part is most of them cannot be uninstalled or disabled. But it's not all bad in the UI. In the new UI, what I like the most is the gesture mode. You can replace the on-screen buttons with finger gestures. Swiping up quickly minimizes the apps and brings the home screen. Swiping up and pausing for a while shows the recent apps and swiping to the right lets the user go back in the menu. Although the device is fun to use by navigating with the gestures, it took quite a while for me to get accustomed with this feature. As for security, you get a fingerprint sensor and face unlock feature as a biometric authentication tool. The fingerprint sensor is fast and accurate, which pleased me. The face unlock is fast as well. However, the face unlock feature is not accessible by all users. It is available in some regions only. It wasn't available when I set the region to Nepal, but the feature popped up when I set the region to India. It was a similar case in the Xiaomi Redmi Note 5 AI, so I couldn't quite understand what Xiaomi is trying to do here. Like the Redmi Note 5 AI, the 6 Pro comes with a 4000 mAh battery. With the massive battery on board, the phone is capable of providing a prolonged backup, giving a remarkable 8-9 to nine hours of screen on time. On normal use, a fully charged Redmi Note 6 Pro can nearly last two days. However, charging this phone was a pain in the neck. This time too, Xiaomi has included a 10W charger which is a very sluggish performer. To get this device to charge from 0 to 30%, it took me half an hour and to get it from 0 to 100%, it took me around 2.5 hours. However, I did purchase a fast charger that cost me around $20. And since this phone only supports Quick Charge 3.0, the charging time was only reduced by a slight margin. So to sum it up, the Xiaomi Redmi Note 6 Pro is a good device, I'm not denying that, but the changes are so subtle over the Note 5 AI that I think it's not worth the price tag it's asking for, especially here in Nepal when it's priced at Rs 29,000. Moreover, I think there are better alternatives at a similar price. The Asus Zenfone Max Pro M2, the Realme 2 Pro, the Honor 8X, the Huawei Y9 2019 are some examples. So as of now, I think there are better options related to price and value for money than the Redmi Note 6 Pro. So that is all for the review. Tell us what you think about the device in the comment section below. Till then, I am Pratima Adhikari and keep watching Gadget Bites.